sit here by the phones just because this is the only place I've found where there's a seat. I've accidentally come an hour early, which is always fun. So it's a good thing that I have my book. Um, I've come here to meet Mickey, which is uh, going to be great because it's like Mickey's so busy these days. It's probably going to be like the last time I'm able to sort of meet up with him properly. He's really hard to get a hold of these days. We're going out to this pub in Itaewon that serves Irish food. Um, and basically this is the best place, other than like Old Cap, this is kind of the best place to get like British-ish style food in Itaewon that I've found because like Irish food and British food is really just, really almost exactly the same. I'm a bit sort of like more self-conscious about vlogging in public when I come to Itaewon because there's always a chance that people can actually understand what the hell I'm saying. Yeah, it is almost like low-key intimidating just to see other foreigners around. Like so, I don't know if you know this, but like, in Korea, there's like the hierarchy of foreigners and nobody ever talks about it, but it's definitely felt. So like at the bottom of the hierarchy, you've got the tourists. And then like one step up me is like foreign students. So that's where I'm at. So I get to look down upon the tourists. And then the one more up is like people like art who've actually come like to Korea for like work or marriage or some reason. And they've like properly like set up a life here. And then the level up is like, the people who have like expatriated their country and come and live as a citizen of Korea. And they're so rare, I never actually met one. <laughs> they're like god they're like the god level status. They get to rule all of the other foreigners and we all have to worship them. That's not true. It's just that's in my mind how it works anyway. One other thing I love about coming to Itaewon is seeing like all of the like various like English language sort of like specialist services or services that specifically advertise that they're in English or that they're in Chinese or something. I think the, my favorite one I've seen so far has just been like, um, it's like, it's like a tax accounting company and it's just called like Kevin's Tax Accountants. <laughs> and I'm just like, it's kind of just funny to me because of the idea of such a serious like business thing, like a tax accountant being named after somebody's first name. It's just like, yeah, Kevin, you go, you account those taxes, Kevin. When this video goes up, I have a week left in Korea. Is it week zero? I'm planning something. I have some plans for that final video. Yeah. It's going to be like a finale. Finale. <laughs> so this is the guy we've been waiting for this whole time. Yeah, I'm not sure if you heard if you guys heard the story. But it's my fault, but not fully my fault. But it's not Monday's fault either. It's so, just a. Uh, like, don't watch the video that Mickey's making about this if you want to hear his full like explanation. Tragedy. <laughs> tragedy. Yeah. It's proper Shakespearean tragedy, which is fitting as we're going to eat some British food today. Because British food is so bad that you have to hand on Irish food to be. No! Introduce <laughs> British food. Okay, British food and Irish food are the same thing. Yeah, they're the same thing essentially. Okay, it's really salty. So, how do you feel about that? I'm from Yongsangdo. Okay. So Gongsang people like salty food. Good. You're so, gonna really like this. Are you ready to eat some bangers and mash? What is that? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, this the is the wolf, place. The wolf, wolf, found. wolf found. It's a really Sherlock Holmesy name, isn't it? like entire atmosphere, decor, everything is pretty typical of British pubs. Okay. <laughs> so like just breathe it in. This is exactly kind of what it's like. They even have like British TV playing. Look. What is yeah, I mean, That's Sky Channel. It's really easy to make it British. Like, where, where is the authentic part of the British thing? In uh, this? You'll see these in this pretty sofa? much every pub. This sofa, this table, yeah. the placemats. The fact that they're doing the football. The only things in here that aren't really like authentic are like the fans. Yeah. Because we don't ever need them in our country, so we don't have fans. <laughs> this here is all really, really pub food. Strip loin steak, bangers and mash, which is sausages and mashed potato. Sorry? Bangers and mash. Yeah. Uh, fish and chips, school of fish and chips. Yeah. Shepherd's pie. Mm -hmm. Shepherd's pie is like a... I'll explain it later. Yeah. Sausages, beans and chips, chicken curry. Chicken curry is really popular. 
chicken tenders and chips, beef and mushroom pie, and la oh, beef and mushroom pie sounds great. Um, Irish lamb stew. You choose beef and mushroom pie, All right. and I choose bangers and mash. All right, all right. How, how does that sound like? Yeah, yeah. I need an explanation. I need an explanation. What, what? is? Oh, right. <laughs> okay, so uh, this is the this bit is the bangers. That's sausages. This is mashed potato. You know what that is, right? Yeah, potato. Yeah, potato. Then this is a vegetable I don't recognize, probably a courgette or something. Carrots, mushrooms. This is a Yorkshire pudding. Uh, you put gravy inside of it usually, and it's really delicious. It's a bit like sort of like um, uh, chewy bread. I'm so like hyped. <laughs> this is really, this is really like the food we have at home. Obviously, it's like really nice because it's in a restaurant. I don't know why you put, why you chose that. Mine looks so much more delicious. Than yours. But mine is delicious on the inside. Don't like. Are you shaming my pie right now? <laughs> this is like. <laughs> <laughs> beauty, the, the like unmanageable beauty standards that pies have to adhere to these days, honestly. All right, so which part should I try? First? Um, try going with the sausage and the mashed potato. Sausage. Sausage and mashed potato. Mm -hmm. At the same time? They yeah. Kind of together. Yeah, yeah. The idea is you sort of mix all of the flavors together while you eat it. The British restaurant has uh, achima. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Try, like not all, the whole sausage at once, Jesus. Man is so picky. <laughs> just, just eat it like a human being. What? <laughs> nobody, is... nobody just inhales an entire sausage into their Man mouth. Is me. I'm not. <laughs> I'm insulting you if you eat sausage like a weirdo. So this is this the right way, kind of. Yeah, yeah. So Mickey tries British food. I don't. I forgot the name. Bangers and mash. Bangers and mash. Mm -hmm. This is so British. <laughs> what's, what's your initial impression? Come on, tell me. I saw your father <laughs> in my head. He just came up. And I saw him and he faded away. I think I and I think I also saw a couple of Korean Englishmen channel. As soon as he ate that, I saw all the British people I know. <laughs> okay, so this pie is kind of like wet on the inside. You're gonna eat it with crust like this. So this is some beef, some vegetables, and then the pie like hat on top of it. So here we go. You guys, I'm so happy now. She's so YouTuber. Oh, you guys. Your reaction is perfect. You're so YouTuber. <laughs> just eating it is so fantastic. <laughs> I'm now just gonna like, I'm tempted to just cut the camera off completely and just enjoy the rest of my people. This is Mickey trying the regional delicacy of my mother's, my mother's province, yeah. is the Yorkshire pudding. Yeah. You just eat it with like a ton of gravy and then whatever else you want. There's no real rules, you can just like freestyle. It's really easy to eat food. It's kind of like chewy, savory bread. This is good. Mm. This is really good. Very boring. I'm still eating my pie. The best British food I've ever, I've ever had. Have you ever had any British food before? Yeah, fish and chips. <laughs> Watch some great drama. I have watched. Okay. But don't don't put that in. <laughs> We're having an argument over who is the most handsome British actor. I just said that when I was like. 12 years old, I had a big crush on Benedict Cumberbatch. But he's, he, he thinks James McAvoy. This is like... Think Benedict Cumberbatch? Looks like a total nerd. <laughs> Don't put that in. I'm totally putting that in. I want to recommend you a good drama. Alright, what's a good drama? Ungapara, Evil Pai Pai. You're gonna need to write that down. It's like React. React. React 1988. React 1988. It's about the family life and love about in 1988. 
Back. That is that is totally something that I would really love. I'm gonna watch that like when I get home. <laughs> like literally, whenever I watch like Korean dramas though, I always end up like I always end up like sort of like not watching to the end because the pacing is so slow. Pacing is so the pacing is so slow because like mainly the kind of dramas that are popular with like people my age are like romance and the romance takes forever it's like 16 episodes before they even kiss and you're like just get on with it you're talking about korean drama right? yeah, yeah. 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 yeah just imagine like greatest british drama like what sherlock sherlock, sherlock is a good one there's also Broadchurch. like there's tons of british dramas in like loads of different styles and imagine, stuff imagine those drama all start with a great opening and great narrative, great mm. stories and end up with love story. It's always, always. It's a huge stress. <laughs> That's what I'm what I'm suffering from whenever I have to watch Korean drama. Really? You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I do. Don't, I don't know why they start always great but always end up with like a low paced. Yeah, exactly. No, because no, like it's when I watch like did you ever watch like Descendants of the Sun, like Taeyang Yeah, yeah. It's like they have like three episodes at the end. Like, okay, the entire like interesting part of the drama is them in the foreign country, and then they have like three whole episodes of them just back in Seoul doing bugger all. And this is like, and they have like a weird sort of. Oh my god, I could I could go on about this. This is a whole different video. I'm like, that's why I recommend you to watch React 1988. All right. I mean, there is kind of a love story too but it's a part of it yeah yeah, yeah. It's, it's a part of a story it, this is about the family mm. family life right. korean korean uh, mentality and korean jong mm. and korean kind of like a, how it was back then that's how, how we took, yeah. took care of each other yeah it tells a lot about korea i i really want to watch that now because that sounds exactly like my kind of thing like i just love good good tv like good tv She actually took me out. She bought me flowers and macro and macarons or macaroons. Is it? No, macron macrons. Macron is the president of France. Macaroons is the little cake thing that comes from France. Um, and then like she also paid for uh, me to go with her kids to like an arcade thing, like a game room. And then we played on like loads of games. And she even paid for me to have a go on VR, which is amazing. <laughs> Like, that is so much fun. <laughs> like, I'm surprised anyone in the entirety of Goyang is doing anything else other than constantly just playing Beat Saber in that one arcade because it was great. But yeah, it's also a bit melancholy because, um, well, the reason I'm sort of getting all of these gifts is because time is nearly up now. It's absolutely crazy. Ah. <laughs> uh, it, I can't even process the fact that this is happening, honestly. Because, you know, I've been here for a year and I'm comfortable here and I want to keep being here and I don't want to suddenly be ripped out to go back to England again. It seems like England is, uh, is just so... I can't even explain it. When I first came here, I remember like the thing that confused me the most about Korea was the signs. Like, all of this neon signage just climbing climbing up the wall like ivy or something. It looked absolutely crazy to me. It was like visual chaos. Now I've gotten quite used to it, actually. I, I am kind of like fond of it in all of its craziness. I'm, I'm really melancholy. I am. I'm, I'm sad. And I can't... I, I don't really grasp this is happening and next week is my last week when you see this video 
gonna be exactly seven days until I leave because I leave on the 15th, Sunday the 15th. And I, I, and I like it here and I don't wanna go and, and I'm not gonna see Mickey again, maybe not for a couple of years. And I'm not gonna see Ite one and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna see any of it. You know, the people I've met, places I've been. It's all gonna be too far away now. It's always really emotional getting like sort of put in one place and then you get settled there and getting ripped out of it and put in another place again.